Jesus of Nazareth was kind of a rebel, stretching the limits and reframing the assumptions and ideas that many of the Jews and the Romans held for a long, long time. In many ways, he was a revolutionary, a radical. And yet, we hear from a Jesus today who's talking not about going crazy or being radical or throwing out all the rules. No, we hear from a Jesus who is clear about the importance of those rules and the need to follow them, saying, in fact, that those who obey the rules have something incredible in store for them. So what's the deal with that? How do those things go together and why should we care? Our gospel today is a pretty short one, which means that Jesus has to get right to the point, and he does. Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so, he says, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He says that he's not here to just scrap all the old stuff, that he hasn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And it's this interesting puzzle, because when you look at the seemingly rebellious things that Jesus gets himself into, arguing with the Pharisees or going against the grain of some of the Jewish thought and traditions, when we see those things, we might think that Jesus doesn't care about any of that, that he's making up all of his own stuff and that's that. Forget those rules, who needs them? Who needs them? Well, we do. And that's why Jesus is adamant that they're not going anywhere. One way that we might look at this whole thing is through the lens of a hoop and a ball. It's March Madness time, the NCAA tournament, and for anyone who's seen basketball games like that, you probably know that one of the worst things to watch is when the rules aren't being followed. When the players are just sloppy or too rough and it feels like the ref has to call a foul every two seconds. It's just not fun to watch because that's not how it's meant to go. There's no consistency, no movement, there's no adherence to the back and forth spontaneity of what's supposed to be happening. And all because the players can't get their acts together and stop following, because they can't follow the rules. When they're playing well, however, when the rules are being respected, basketball can be a truly beautiful sight. And actually, it's very similar when it comes to our faith and following the rules, the commandments that God has laid out for us. Because those instructions aren't meant to punish us, but to show us the best way to play, or in this case, the best way to live. They help us live a happy and holy life, one where we're not constantly starting and stopping up, one where more is able to keep happening and we're able to fluidly interact with those around us. Sure, it might be easier to run around not following any rules, but there's nothing good or meaningful about that at all, which is why Jesus wanted the commandments to stick around, because he knew that they were so important in leading us to God, and through that, in helping us to be the best that we could be. Now, as radical as Jesus might seem at times then, we, he was a radical in a way that led people toward God and toward following the laws that he knew would be so good for them, even when that wouldn't be easy or fun or, or just like everyone else did. In a way then, we might say that oftentimes the most radical thing you can do is to follow the rules and do it well. So this Lent, why not try that out? Be radical following those rules, the laws and guidelines of our church and our God. Because if you do it, you can truly be a, a beautiful player and play this beautiful game. You can truly live this beautiful life, the one that each and every one of us has to live.